nations are caught by these creatures, whoever they are, at a time of weakness. Nations are caught at a time when they are either emerging from major wars or at a time when people are coming together to form a new nation or a new tribe or a new clan. And that is where the terrible Chita will catch them. You've had a remarkable life, uh, not least because of the uh, horrendous things that have happened to you. Um, but there was one story you told me about what happened, I think it was in Soweto, yes. which encapsulates not just how easy it is to manipulate black people, but how easy it is to manipulate all people, because this is how um, it happens. When a journalist misquoted you and people believed it, um, could you tell us that story? The story is very simple, sir, and my life is just an ordinary life. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> after the Soweto unrest of 1976, all of us who had been supervisors in various municipality installations which had been damaged during the unrest, were called before a judge in Pretoria. The name of the judge was Justice Seli. Seli wanted all of us to give him a clear report of what we had seen take place and how the installations we were the supervisors of had been destroyed during the unrest. Many people were afraid of speaking at this, at this uh, inquiry, which was called the Sili Inquiry. And we were promised that our names would remain anonymous. But when the inquiry was on, I noticed reporters at the inquiry in a place where they were not supposed to be if the inquiry was to be held in camera, why then were the reporters there? And amongst one of the reporters, amongst the reporters, was a white woman, Helen Zille. Now, I spoke to the judge, answering his questions, and then I said to the, to the judge, protection for workers in Soweto is completely inadequate. Innocent workers are being beaten up and sometimes killed by the rioting youths. Can't more protection be supplied to those of our people who are willing to work? And this white woman went on to write in a, the Rand Daily Mail newspaper that I had said that the army should be called into Soweto to quell the unrest. Now, here was a white woman defying the orders of a judge. breaking the law with impunity almost, of all the people who testified in that place, some of whom said worse things than I said, only my name was betrayed. And after that, my home was attacked by 500 or more school children. It happened in in September 1976, my wife was raped. My children were beaten and injured. How they managed to escape, I don't know. 
and I was stoned and stabbed many times. And when I was lying on the ground completely helpless, petrol was thrown over me. And that was when I knew fears. Because we African people believe that if you are bent to death, not only is your body consumed by the flames, but your soul is destroyed as well. We believe that although a human being possesses an immortal soul within him or her, that soul can be destroyed by fire. How I escaped from that holocaust, I do not know. Something must have frightened these children. They all ran away and left me lying in my blood in, at the back of my house. And not a single one of the many neighbors I had, many of whom I had helped years before and weeks and months before with loans of money and gifts of food, not one of them moved to help me at that time. Uh, I, yes, I was <clears throat> taken, I managed to crawl to a municipality yard and there I hid in a corrugated iron shack until nightfall. And then a man came to see me there and this man drove away a gunman who had come in there, into that yard, to finish me off. And this man took me through a hole in the fence to the house of a Sangoma, who is one of my followers. And that Sangoma, at great risk to her life, hid me under her bed until the police came to take me out of there. I was covered with wounds and a broken knife was lodged in my body. And somebody had tried to cut off these two fingers. This is where the knife went in and here it came out. After that we hid in, a, in, a, in the back yard of a police station. And after that, my, my immediate superior, a white gentleman who is a horticulturist, smuggled me out of Soweto with my family and took me to Natal, and where I stayed for over a year recovering from my injuries. And all this, Krakow, right is from one journalist Yes, a white sir. journalist during apartheid. Yes, sir. Saying you said something you didn't say. Yes, sir. Now, and what what does that say about how easy it is to manipulate people? I mean, you must have been frustrated beyond belief. Sir, let me tell you, Mr. Ike, that the enemies of humankind, the Chitawuli, or whatever it is we choose to call them, have in newspapers a devastating weapon, a weapon for which there is no answer. Using a newspaper, they can lash out at anyone, knowing that that victim cannot fight back. Credo, what's the agenda for Africa now? We've told a long story. Um, we're in the modern world, we're looking ahead. Um, what's the agenda of the Illuminati Chittahuli for Africa? And the world come to that, you think? It appears uh, from what I see happening all over Africa that the Chittahuli are depopulating or destroying those countries in Africa which, left to themselves, could become the bread baskets of this continent. 